we are now at AIBC Summit in Dubai and uh, we met this uh, Lucky Greenspan, founder of Quantum Economics. Uh, it's an uh, analytics advisory and asset management company. Nice to meet you here, Marty. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, so can you tell about uh, how did you get uh, into cryptocurrency? How did you know about Bitcoin? Which year was it? Sure, so that was in 2013. Uh, I was working as an analyst in eToro and uh, the CEO of eToro, of course, Yoni Asia, uh, he's a very big Bitcoin proponent, a proponent of tokenization and uh, he uh, sent out an email uh, all about Bitcoin and um, of course I fell in love immediately because I was somebody who watched the 2008 financial crisis and all of the effect and the, for me it was like, yay, we get our own money now for, you know, internet money and this was uh, to me immediate. Um, passion. Uh, I went to Facebook and I said, hey everybody, the future of money is here and uh, of course nobody responded to that and uh, so a few years later I deleted Facebook. But uh, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, Yoni gave me my first Bitcoin in 2013 uh, and uh, I've been involved in ever since. Did you keep it or did you sell and then buy back again? <laughs> Uh, so during the uh, ICO of uh, 2017, well, I invested in the DAO in Ethereum in uh, 2014, of course. Uh, that was quite successful. Um, not because the, the DAO eventually failed, but uh, I, got, I was able to get my, uh, my money back and the price of Ethereum went uh, to the moon. Uh, I did unfortunately invest in a lot of ICOs in uh, 2018 and those didn't work out too well. So, uh, Quantum Economics is a firm for analysis, advisory, and money management. Uh, we have 20 analysts from around the world who are, uh, many of them, uh, thought leaders and social influencers. We have 2 million followers uh, across social networks, uh, and we do a lot of work with an end analysis, providing commentary for mainstream media, uh, interviews on Bloomberg and CNBC and things like this. Um, and uh, of course we do advisory for many different companies, Chili's, Electronium, uh, Lunar Crush and uh, Luna Wallet uh, and as well uh, uh, money management services. And how, uh, what is uh, your assets on the management currently? What's uh, so we have uh, about one and a half million dollars under management in eToro which is from the retail sector uh, and we're building a uh, fund now for qualified investors. Yeah, I kind of wish I could uh, tell the future, all, but uh, that's, as we know, not quite possible. Um, I think that what happened uh, over the last two weeks was uh, a lot of leverage uh, in the market that had been building up over a lot of time that uh, played out, uh, reached its maximum, and I think that a lot of people got liquidated, unfortunately. Uh, some 800,000 uh, traders were completely wiped out. Um, and uh, this is the nature of the market, especially in, the, in a market that's largely unregulated and leverage is easily available, especially there's a lot of newcomers, retail investors who are not so familiar with how to use leverage, uh, so they're gonna, they're gonna learn their lessons the hard way. Um, as far as uh, you know, price predictions are concerned, I would say in the long term, this is a very promising industry. Uh, remain diversified within your portfolio and you'll do well. Yeah, certainly. So algorithmic trading is uh, something that uh, basically uh, robots are able to trade uh, much faster than humans in a lot of scenarios. Uh, I think what we were discussing was uh, the possibility of triangular arbitrage, uh, which is uh, quite an exciting uh, opportunity, especially if you have a, a good liquidity and uh, a platform that can handle this type of uh, this type of orders. Yeah, and uh, as well, uh, based on your market crash, not only. Um, over the long term, I think that there's a very strong correlation. The reason being that all of the money is created in the same place at the central bank. Uh, and then we have a fractional reserve banking system, which multiplies the money that's being created by the central bank. And that uh, is money that needs to find a home. 
Um, a lot of it ends up in the stock market, but a lot of but uh, increasingly that's going towards uh, crypto and Bitcoin. So over the long term, as long as the Fed remains uh, with their finger on the on the button and printing more and more money, um, this is good for all risk assets across the board. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it depends really what's happening on a regular day, on a Tuesday. I don't think there's much correlation, but uh, we saw in uh, March of 2020 when COVID hit, uh, everything kind of fell together as uh, investors were scrambling. So I would say that in times of stress, uh, the markets will, will tend to correlate more and when things are, are nicer, uh, a bit less in the short term. And on which, uh, which stage of the cycle are we? And uh, what is your advice? Is it a good entry point for yeah, I mean, it's always a good time to buy Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be 21 million of them. Um, I would say that if you are investing, and especially for the long term, it's much better to buy after a big sell-off uh, than, you know, at the, at the peak of the price. Um, so certainly uh, it, would, it would seem a, a good time, yes. And so what do you see the value of um, in what in what sense, like? Uh, like a lot of people say that it's only speculation and there's no real value. Going. Ah, so I think that uh, if somebody is saying that they don't really, they're not really watching very well what's happening under the surf or what's being built right now and uh, what's happening actually in the market. Um, and as I spoke uh, on our panel this morning, um, there is a very big uh, demand. Uh, from, tradi from traditional finance, uh, who is basically getting screwed over by the Federal Reserve uh, and parking uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in uh, government bonds and government debt. Uh, it's, a, it's an asset class that is completely dead in my opinion, uh, and not only my opinion, Ray Dalio echoed this just uh, yesterday. Um, why would you lend your money to a government and actually uh, accept a negative yield? Why would you pay money to the government in order to lend them money? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense from an asset management point, point of view. It doesn't make any sense from an investor point of view. And uh, the DeFi market is able to uh, offer five, eight, uh, in some cases 10%. Uh, I, and I think that a lot of money is going to the flow in this direction. Um, do you do any yield farming? Uh, what's, uh, what's your opinion on DeFi and yeah, I have uh, three analysts on my team right now who are millionaires from DeFi yield farming. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're very bullish on this. From which protocols? Uh, we'll have to ask them. <laughs> okay. And so, what are your current altcoin picks? Oh, so many. Um, I'm an advisor, of course, to Chili's and Electronium. Um, and uh, I would say those, are, those two uh, I'm holding quite strongly. Um, especially with Chili's with all of the different fan tokens. Uh, some of the partnerships are quite amazing and this is where we see real real utility in the market simply by, by nature of the size of their target audience, which is, uh, you know, sports fans. Um, yeah, it's the biggest uh, related to NFTs with the biggest returns. <laughs> it's the biggest demographic, right? I mean, male and female is one demographic, like all males in the world. But like right after male and female is sports fans because they have, like so many people are, are fans of sports and they would, are always looking to get closer to, to their team and, uh, and this is one way they can do it easily. And do you think that besides its uh, market cap, it has uh, potential to go even more? Of course. I mean, uh, if you're asking about Chili's directly, I mean, they've seen an incredible run up uh, for which we're very fortunate. Um, and I think that uh, long term prospects for this project. Uh, they're continuing to add new teams. They're continuing to add new partnerships. Uh, so it's it, it's only uh, you know it's only one direction. And, uh, what's your uh, other conflicts besides Electronium? Oh come on, uh, you know the, the top ten. You can see my Etoro account is public information. Uh, I think that the number one point I'm holding in Etoro is Dogecoin, uh, Uniswap, and uh, you know Chainlink and uh, all of the rest. But you can see it on my public portfolio. Okay, we'll check it out. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your views. Thanks for having me.